quadratic and polynomial inequalities. Solving 2x squared plus x is greater than 15 is not the same process as solving a linear inequality. 3x plus 5 greater than 10. We must get all terms on the left side of the inequality so that we have the form our function is greater than zero or our function is less than zero. So your function needs to be on the left hand side. The other side you want to be zero. That's our first step. Our second step is we are going to find the boundary points and these are also called critical values in some books. So if I say that, it's the same as boundary points. And you're going to mark those on the number line. So what you want to find out is when is this equal to zero? So you will set it equal to zero and find those points, mark them on a number line, and then you have to test points in the different intervals and shade the correct ones. Let's look at our first problem. 2x squared plus x is greater than 15. So the first thing we have to do is get the 15 on the left hand side. So we'll subtract it and now we are in the proper form. Our function is greater than zero. We have to set this equal to zero and solve. So we're looking for our boundary points. So we're going to factor this one and I'm going to go ahead and just give you the correct factorization. 2x minus 5 and x plus 3 and you should always check outside and inside so 6x minus 5x gives us positive 1x so we're good set each piece equal to 0 so this will give us add your 5 to both sides and divide by 2 so x equals 5 halves this one, x plus 3 equals 0. Subtract your 3, x equals negative 3. So, we have our number line. We have negative 3, and we have 5 halves. So, we're going to have three regions that we need to test. You need to pick a point in each region, but don't pick these boundary or critical points. So in this section, I'm going to pick a negative 4. In this section, I'll pick a 0. And 5 halves is the same as 2.5, so over here I will pick a 3. Now, we don't have to actually test it in the entire thing. Um, I'm going to do a little shortcut and just look at the signs. So I'm going to test in 2x minus 5, x plus 3, and then the product of those, because at the end I just want to know if it's bigger than 0 or if it's less than 0. So that's why I just care about the signs. So. If we test negative 4 in this 2x minus 5, so that would be negative 8 minus 5 is going to give me negative. If I do negative 4 plus 3 will give me negative. And a negative times a negative will give me positive. Right? And then I'll test in this region a 0. 2 times 0 is 0 minus 5 will give me negative. 0 here, 0 plus 3 will give me positive, and a negative times a positive will give me negative. Then I'll test the 3. 2 times 3 is 6, minus 5 gives us positive. 
Test the 3 here. 3 plus 3 is 6 gives us positive, and positive times a positive gives us positive. All right, look back and see what you wanted for your inequality. So you want it to be greater than 0. You want the ones that are positive on your bottom line. So you want this section, and you want this section. For your end points, you look back at your inequality. There is no equals underneath, so you're going to want parentheses in the direction of your shading. So you can use interval notation, and our interval notation, we're going from negative infinity to negative 3, parentheses, union, 5 halves, to infinity. For our next problem, we first have to get to proper form. So we need everything on the left-hand side and a 0 on the right-hand side. So I'm going to add 3x squared, keep my 7x, subtract the 6. That will give me 0. Right, and now we'll find our critical values, so we want to know when this is equal to zero and again we'll factor and I'm just going to help you here and give you the correct factoring so that we don't take a long time with that. It's 3x minus 2 and x plus 3 can double check outside and inside, there's 9x minus 2x gives us 7x equals 0. So for this one, 3x minus 2 equals 0, add your 2, 3x equals 2, divide by 3, x equals 2 thirds, and this one, x will equal negative 3. So we'll do our number line. Make sure that you go in numerical order on your number line. So we're going to have negative 3, and we're going to have 2 thirds. Those are our boundary points or critical values. And again, we have to pick points in each region to test that are clearly not these points. So I can test negative 4, I can test 0, and I can test 1. And I uh, will use the parentheses because I really just care about the signs. So 3x minus 2, x plus 3, and the product of those So, first I will test negative 4. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, minus 2 is going to be negative. Negative 4 here, negative 4 plus 3 is going to give us negative. Negative times negative will give us positive. Next we'll test 0. 3 times 0 is 0, minus 2 will give us negative. 0 here, 0 plus 3 will give us positive. Negative times positive will give us negative. Test 1. 3 times 1 is 3, minus 2 will give us positive. 1 plus 3 is 4, positive. Positive times positive gives us positive. Right. Look back at your original inequality here in our proper form, and we want our function to be less than or equal to 0. So if it's less than 0, it's going to be negative on the bottom line. So this is the section we want. We'll fill it in. For your ends, this time you have an equals underneath your inequality symbol, so you will want brackets in the direction of your shading. So our solution here in interval notation is negative 3 to 2 thirds with brackets. For our next problem, we're already in proper form. We have our function on the left-hand side less than 0. So we will factor this and solve it. And so 
um, it's a double solution, so x is just going to be 1. So we're only getting one boundary point. So we will test um, 0, and we'll test a 2 in x minus 1, and do it again, and then the product. Right, so if we test 0, 0 minus 1 gives us negative, and this will also be negative, and negative times negative will give us positive. If we test the 2, 2 minus 1 gives us positive, and 2 minus 1 gives us positive, and a positive times a positive gives us positive. Let's look back and see what we want. We want this to be less than 0, so we want it to be negative on the bottom line, and there is nothing. So this one, there is no solution. If our problem had been turned the other way, our inequality symbol, right, then we would have wanted it to be positive. These sections are both positive, so our answer would look like this, just excluding the 1 because there is no equals underneath. Let's look at one more, and this one is already factored for us. It's in the proper form. We have our function is greater than 0, so we can get our boundary points off. This will be x equal 1, x equal 3, and x equals negative 2 that we have to check. Make sure you go in numerical order, so negative 2. 1 and 3, and we're going to look at x minus 1, x minus 3, x plus 2, and their product. Right, so we need some test values. We can test negative 3. We can test 0. We can test 2, and we can test 4. So if we test negative 3, negative 3 minus 1 is going to be negative. If we test negative 3 here, negative 3 minus 3 is going to be negative. Negative 3 plus 2 is going to be negative. Multiplying 3 negatives gives us negative. If we test 0, 0 minus 1 will give us negative. 0 minus 3 will give us negative. 0 plus 2 will give us positive. And 2 negatives multiplied uh, will give us a positive. All right? If we test a 2, 2 minus 1 gives us positive. 2 minus 3 gives us negative. 2 plus 2 gives us positive. And we multiply with only one negative. That's odd, so it gives us a negative. If we test 4, 4 minus 1 gives us positive. 4 minus 3 gives us positive. 4 plus 2 gives us positive. Multiplying all positives gives us positive. Notice back on your original inequality, we want positive. We want this to be greater than 0. So the sections we want are the positive ones. We want this section and this section. You do want the ends because of the equals, so brackets, and then our interval notation. So we're going to go negative, and negative 2 to 1, union, 3 to infinity.